a mirror's temperature is always zero. It is ice in the veins. Its camera is an x-ray. Whoa. What else? It is a chalice held out to you in silent communion. Silent communion? That's good. He's transfixed by the words. Where gaspingly you partake... Where gaspingly you partake of a shifting identity never your own. Dang. That's some great shit. You came up with that yourself. I don't really know. Uh, I think that maybe an actual... I th I think that may be an actual poet and I've learned it by heart. I'm just a vessel for the muse. I think the words are mine, yes. I don't really know. <laughs> no matter. Great verse is like that sometimes. Ephemeral. You might not look it. Seems you have some literary chops. Maybe there's hope for me yet. That's a strange compliment. Just messing with you. It's cool. You're an okay guy. For a cop. For a cop? They're more often in the fists than rhymes, see? let alone honesty and verse. In a small office behind the old military hospital, hunched under the green glow of his desk light, Officer Hans Blau browses through a test print of his Futurist magazine. It's called The Futurist. The typeface on the header is too small. Any uh, organization gets all kinds of folks. I'm sure we try our best. I'm doing what little I can to do right by people. Um, no joke, man. Fuck the police. Yeah, sure. The lieutenant closes his eyes and lets slip a loud, long sigh. <laughs> um, if you say so, officer. He gives you a cautious thumbs up. You found some common ground with this man. Even impressed him. The next time you look in the mirror, though, remember those words. Um, that's a very low check, and I don't want to, after this conversation, want to <laughs> completely blow it, and, uh, by trying to empathize, actually insult him or something like that. So, I'm, I'm gonna save that for later when the stat is higher. Alrighty then. Oh, the sun is, is the sun coming out? It's a bit brighter, feels like. Maybe it's just misty, and, uh, that's where the... <laughs> The lightness comes from. Okay, come on. Let's not get stuck on corners. Alrighty. Now let's head over to the church. Hopefully we succeed this time. That uh, would be nice. Though, obviously I'm not gonna... I'm not too hopeful yet. Let's see how high the percentage gets though. That would be uh, useful. Man, what's, what's going on with the performance today, though? This jitteriness is really strange. Uh, doesn't really matter. In conversations, you don't notice it anyways. At least I don't. <laughs> okay, then. Let's walk over to her. And give it another go. Yes, what is it? Okay, 83% chance crossing our fingers and... Everything yes. disappears. You are draped in silence like a drowning man staring into his puny little headspace. And then the pressure changes. Uh, what does it mean? Uh, yes, but can I hear anything? What does it mean? It feels like flying on an aerostatic. Or when your ears pop. Or like a subtle difference in the atmosphere. A weather change hanging in the air. What if the sound you're looking for is too low for you to hear it? Um, sooner. Uh, what if we just need a better sound system? A better sound system? Alright, but where would we get one? Suddenly, a rhythmic beat permeates the walls, causing a small patch of decorative stucco to crumble onto the wooden floor. They should really allocate some renovation funds for this place. Uh, murmurs the lieutenant, inspecting the damage done to the uh, Arba... Arabesque. No. What they really should do is shut down the disco men for disturbing neighborhood peace. Yes, but they could help with the speakers. You mean the speed freaks? She closes her eyes as more dance music invades the holy silence of the sanctuary. Of course. The speed freaks. They have a fantastic sound system. 
And you think they would help me? Um, they would if you wouldn't mind them moving in with you. I guess I could live through a week or two of peaceful coexistence. Great. I'll go talk to them then. Sure. Let me know how it goes. Thanks. Wonderful. That's that's great news. Actually succeeded. And now we can just get them in there, complete that quest line. So that's at least something, or at least advance it. I don't know if it's going to be over after that or if, if there's more to it in the end. But advancements are always good, or in, in games at least. Alrighty. Oh, what's here? Yellow moss on these stones. They're probably stolen from someone's garden. Alrighty, let's go in. So, I think you're the Hi one again. you can actually so, uh, properly have conversations going? with. Um, I'm here to talk about the church again. Yes? What's the deal? Um, good news, I managed to convince Suna she's okay with you guys moving in, but on one condition, she needs your speakers for her project. We are grateful, Cotman. You're an augury of a new era of anodic dance music. The speed freak smiles happier than he's ever been. Uh, you're going to have to share space for a couple of weeks until she gets her research finished. That's fine. We can manage. He grins, excited. And what about the side business? Have you made up your mind? Uh, you mean the drug lab? Yeah, that's not going to happen. It's illegal, you see. Side business? I don't know what you're talking about. Yeah, I don't care. Of course. <laughs> I'm at the bar, obviously. Why am I even talking about this? Andre grins as if this settles it. It's going to take us a bit to move our stuff inside. A couple of hours, maybe. Come check back later. Let's get moving. Uh, he waves to the other speed freaks. Let's get moving. Yeah, leave the tent. Okay, in a couple of hours we can come back. That's good. Um, Alright, where do we go for now? So, um... The dice maker was at 17. This has been updated after... Yeah, check uh, check up on Suna's project after the ravers have moved in. Visit the nightclub after ravers have moved in. Okay, so that's gonna, I assume, take some time. I think we could use that time to actually read one of the books, then go to... Then check on them and then go to the dice maker, or maybe go to the dice maker and then check on them again. Um, all right. Books. What do we want to read? Do we want to read The Greatest Innocence or do we want to read um, Dick Mullen? Um, this dusty tome brings knowledge on the history of innocences. It is written by one... Uh, I'm sorry, I don't really know how to pronounce that. Um, I, I, I don't know how the uh, A with the um, squiggly line on top of it is pronounced. Joao Paulo um, Salomao Lopez de Fuego, a mask fascist who tries to reach a conclusion on which of the innocences is the coolest in the world. Or Dick Mullen, another Dick Mullen book that woefully misrepresents the nature of police work. In this one, our detective returns from a trip having successfully solved one case, only to embark on another. Does he finally face the taxing nature of his occupation? No, he doesn't even look like a normal officer of the law. Okay, let's let's read that one. I mean, both are, in a way, kind of fascist-leaning, but let's hope um, a, trashy, um, a, a trashy crime novel doesn't uh, corrupt this guy's mind. <laughs> in your hand, you hold Dick Mullen and the mistaken identity. The brittle paperback feels fragile to the touch. Let's examine the cover. The cover features a pastiche of different scenes. In the foreground, a man in a dark overcoat clutches a pistol to his chest. Rising up behind him are two silhouettes wrapped in a passionate embrace. The tagline reads, Detective Dick Mullen must prove his innocence after an old friend is murdered by someone who looks just like Dick Mullen. That seems to sum up the premise nicely. Needless to say, it violates nearly every RCM regulation for a detective to investigate a murder in which he is a suspect. 
Are you really reading that, detective? Uh, I really need to know who this Dick Mullen guy is. I'm looking for, advi uh, for advice on uh, being a real detective. I'm just skimming it. Yeah, I'm just That's skimming it. That's probably for the best. Those books aren't exactly thin for the type plotting. It's much more about the dark and deadly atmosphere. Let's start reading. The story opens with a knock at the door. Detective Dick Mullen is greeted by an old friend, Charlie Spillane, who's come to Mullen to ask a favor on this dark and cold night. Spillane needs Mullen to drive him in from Vespa to a small town along the Insulindian coast. Despite his friend's apparent agitation, Mullen does as he's asked, then returns home where he passes out drunk, as he does most nights. So maybe it's a bit relatable for him? An extremely unprofessional and hurtful stereotype that's offensive to all upstanding officers of the law. Well, luckily I'm not really an, an upstanding officer, uh, am I? But also extremely accurate, in your case. Hey, I'm trying at least. Look, I can't judge or uh, keep reading. Um, um, look, I can't judge. Two days later, Mullen is arrested by the Vespa police and charged with the murder of Charlie Spillane. At his interrogation, Mullen learns that Charlie Spillane was shot in a bar in the very town Mullen dropped him off in by a man matching Mullen's description. Desperate to clear his name, Mullen manages to convince the Vespa police to release him for three days so that Mullen may solve his friend's murder and prove his innocence. Uh, the cops re oh the lighting changed uh, the cops uh, release their prime murder suspect so we can find the real killer are you shitting me what's the matter detective I don't know who's writing this shit but I get the feeling they aren't expert on homicide investigations the lieutenant shrugs resigned to the idea that his profession <laughs> will rarely if ever be accurately represented in art and literature they're not shitting you, detective. This is what the writers think passes for police procedure. Okay, so Mullen didn't do it. Of course Mullen didn't do it. That's the whole premise of the book. Anyway, Mullen returns to the seaside bar where Spillane was murdered and meets a beautiful, mysterious woman named Diana de Nerva. Uh, nice, a dame. Now it's getting interesting. Um, nice, a dame. And not just any dame. She's truly one in a million. A knockout whose mind is as dangerous as her curves. But she's got a secret. Man, who doesn't? Secrets are the currency of human relations. Now it's getting interesting. Deneuve reveals that she was Belaine's lover and that he was mixed up with a local amphetamine smuggling operation. As soon as Mullin begins pulling at strings, the whole conspiracy begins to unravel. Not only is the local police captain in on the amphetamine ring, so is the son of a powerful politician and a strung-out art collector named Torvald, each of whom has his own reasons for wanting Spillane dead. Tell me about the corrupt police captain. Outwardly, the old police captain is a real law and order crypto-fascist, a barrel-chested man who's beaten his share of suspects to pulp. But He's also dirty and increasingly paranoid that someone's going to expose his role in the drug ring. He would certainly have the motive and the means, but the captain walks with a noticeable limp from an old war injury. Is it possible that he was able to conceal it long enough to commit the murder? I want to hear about the politician's son. A typical privileged twat. In all likelihood, he's just in over his head. He does bear a personal grudge against Belaine, though. A former prosecutor who nearly brought down his father's administration. The kid doesn't exactly have Dick Mullen's manly build, but he is the correct height. And while interrogating him at his home, Mullen did notice a certain overcoat that looks suspiciously like his own. What was that about an art collector? Torvald, the art collector, is a strung out mess. Frankly, it's hard to imagine him holding a pistol steady enough to actually hit someone, let alone plug them three times in the chest the way Ospelain got did. That said, Torvald and Spillain have a long history, and while interrogating him, Mullen discovers that Torvald was once involved 
with Deanna Deneuve. Could it be that this is all over a sordid love triangle? Okay, let's get on with the story. One evening, Deanna Deneuve comes to Mullen's hostel room in tears. The two of them drink half a bottle of vodka, and soon they're seeking comfort in each other's arms. Yes, comfort and pleasure. The warmth of another human's touch. The burning taste of liquor on her full, sweet lips. Well, that testimony won't be admissible any longer. Uh, how does Mullen expect to solve the murder if he's sleeping with the witnesses? Uh, nice, get in Mullen. Uh, I'm not sure I'm happy with this, but maybe the story will turn it around. How does Mullen expect to solve the murder if he's sleeping with witnesses? The man's a prosecutor's nightmare. Solving a murder counts for nothing if all the evidence gets thrown out in court over police misconduct. Uh, I'm not sure I'm happy with this, but maybe the story will turn it around. As the two lovers share a post-coital cigarette, Deanna Deneuve turns to Mullen and says, By the way, Dick, there was something else I meant to tell you. And then she dies or something? Always aim for the center of mass. Whatever it is, Mullen never hears the words. A blow to the base of his skull knocks him out cold instantly. Fuck. When Mullen comes to, Deneuve is dead on the hostel bed next to him. To make matters worse, his clothes are covered with her blood. Double fuck. Mullen trashes his blood-stained clothes and flees the hostel, knowing it's only a matter of hours before the cops discover Deneuve's body, if they haven't been tipped off already. Fleeing a crime scene, destroying evidence, even if Detective Mullen didn't commit the murder. He should be facing years behind bars. The heat is on. If Dick Mullen can't solve both murders before the cops catch up to him, he's going away for life. Can you solve the case before the cops close in? Um... Wait, I've got some questions first. What is it, Detective? Why does everyone close to uh, Dick Mullen end up dead? It's a dangerous line of work. But somebody has to do it. That's why Dick Mullen never lets anyone get too close. Why did Dick Mullen become a detective in the first place? There was never a time when he wasn't a detective. He was born a detective. Was I not born a detective? A born to be a detective? For a moment, you cease to read the story on the page and see the book for what it is. A collection of brittle, cheaply printed pages held together by glue made from the hooves of horses. From nowhere, you hear the screech of sneakers on a waxed floor, and you feel the burn of rope against your hands. Are these figments of some other life? You won't find the answers you're looking for here, in other words. Uh, why bother solving crimes when the world is so evil? I don't have any more questions, I figured it out. Oh, why bother? Is it really so evil, detective? Okay, maybe not. Uh, there are parts worth saving. Like what? Friends and family, the smooth taste of some ultra-high-proof booze, drugs. You know it's all about the drugs. Uh, friends and family. Do you even have those? I've got Kim. Just make sure you don't lose him. You'll not find another like him. It's true, in more ways than you know. But then, what does this book know? It's just a poorly made piece of pulp garbage, made to be consumed and discarded. I don't have any more questions, I figured it all out. So, who did it, detective? Who killed Charlie Spillane and Deanna Deneuve? Uh, communism killed them, uh, the dirty police captain, uh, the junkie art collector, the politician's twat son, uh, Dick Mullen. You know what? I don't even care. I don't know, um, maybe the uh, politician's son? Could be. Who knows? Only one way to find out. Let's finish the book. You begin furiously flipping through pages. Even as you know these books follow a series of well-worn tropes, you find yourself completely engrossed. You're turning pages so fast, you don't even notice the ancient spine coming unglued. You try to grab the pages as they come loose, but your fingers aren't quick enough. They're gone. Dozens of pages scatter across the ground. The last fifth or so of the book seems to have been lost. 
It's possible that you could gather and reassemble the pages, but it would take way too long. Stupid old horse clue. Ah, yes. The problem with mass market paperbacks. They are not made to last. Perhaps this is a sign that you should get back to solving your own murder, huh, eh, detective? I was Don't planning forget, on it. It could have been the delirium tremens. In your hand, you hold four fifths of Dick Mullen and the mistaken identity. Let's put it away. Wonderful. Now it's uh, late enough to get our dice from the dice maker. Or a die, I think it's only a singular one. Um, and maybe it's enough time for the. for the. Um, for the. Uh, what was it? The speed freaks um, to move in here. Ah, yeah. There they are. Let's talk to her first. Yes, what is it? She look, uh, She doesn't look up from the keyboard. How's the project going? I see that your neighbors have moved in, but all I hear is a nodic dance music. What? What did you say? Uh, you can barely hear her over the thumping bass of a nodic dance music. I said, how's the project going? I can't hear you! The music is too loud! Uh, give up uh, trying to communicate in a nightclub. She shrugs and turns back to her radio computer. Right, I'll uh, let you work in peace now. Can I talk to you from here? You got us in, cop. I can't believe you got us in. He looks around the hall, examining the carpentry. Between you and me, I don't know if you've noticed this about me. I'm a little suspicious of authority. You, you really came through for the hardcore underground. Yes, you really came through for the hardcore underground. How come? Andre is busy cutting some slightly less lame, but still quite ungainly shapes on the church floor, sweating profusely. <laughs> a cell using her contact mic to listen to a tree underwater. The one with the large head is blasting the dance track on repeat while the stained glass window behind him is rattling from the base. Sire, the tent, it was a security risk. And in here, sanctuary, it was only noble of you. Uh, these kids got spunk, I admire that. Um, better here than in that tent, uh, it wasn't safe. I'm genuinely into the hardcore lifestyle, you wouldn't understand. I'm a corrupt cop, Kim, this is a corrupt scheme. I did it for mankind, for all of mankind. Um, better here than in the tent. Okay. Uh, the lieutenant keeps it lac uh, laconic. What he means is, you're right, actually. The tent was a safety hazard, and this place was deserted anyway. Um, Noy, what do you think about the church? It's a miracle of carpentry. Their bodies carved into total shapes. Now it can be something more. He rubs his hands together. How old do you think this church is? Over 300 years? That's right. The first settlers built it, plus six more like it. On the coast here was one of the first things they did. Must have been really scared of something, but I understand. Alone on an uninhabited archipelago, forced to face themselves and nature. Pre-industrial quantities of solitude. You see, perhaps something more fundamental. I would want to build a safe place for myself and my own as well. His voice echoes in the wooden cavern of the church. What style is this church built in? A cop who's in the building critique. Okay then, this is folk DeLoreanism, lawmonger, huh? It's a subset of early DeLorean architecture. Okay, and what is DeLorean architecture like? Total. Everything between an ancient concrete cathedral and a glass cube is DeLoreanism. This is just an homespun version of it. Folksy stuff. Early mass production. They made thousands like this. Does that help you out? What would a DeLorean building look like? Like that woman there. Vertical, thin, white. A false image of grandeur. The source of the system is up there. You're at the bottom. They really dug that power vertical. 
like to show off large and intricate structures, arches, spires, but you're down with them. They were really into painting everything white too. Virginal shit, you know, married shit, virtue and tyranny. This church isn't painted white as far as I can tell. Stands to reason it used to be white on the outside before the sea wind took all the paint off. Year after year, flake after flake, whitewashed clean, then covered in green moss. Slowly peeled by the wind, your skin crawls from the sensation as you look around. Uh, what did, uh, what did you mean by dead bodies? Dead bodies are perennial plants. Sigma functions are left this place. It's a good thing we came along. The spiritual collapse has been total. A spiritual collapse? I saw some piglets suckling in their dead mother. Have you heard this one, cop man? After a short while, they shuddered and went away. They had sensed that she could no longer see them and that she wasn't like them anymore. What they loved in their mother weren't her body, but whatever it was that made her body live. End of quote. This is an high quality carcass. The power of anodic beats and hard bass is needed to reanimate it. Uh, first, where is that quote from? A Sarai's man who lived a long time ago, an ancient hardcore brother. Uh, what you're saying is you're not a big fan of the uh, Innocentic system? A 3,000 year old tyrannical regime of history. Built and maintained by hundreds of generations of self-appointed intellectuals. It's false core. The way he says it, the force in false core is invested with 20 kilotons of disgust. Um, but you guys said the Ecclesiastes were all about love and hardcore before, remember? I only said unity. One word. Figures of authority always misquote you. He points to his friend. Andre doesn't care about the Ecclesiastes. He just wants the operation to run smoothly. And Egg is a demi-beast. You shouldn't listen to what people say. You should listen to what they are. Uh, I even agreed with you about the, Eccles uh, about the Ecclesiastes being okay with this. Uh, and you propose dance music will supplant this system? Anodic dance music. Regular dance music wasn't hard enough. And yes, I do. You know what this kind of stuff goes well with. Uh, don't you have to be on drugs for that though? Uh, I don't need to be an arc. Your pleasure response was more like... Just wondering if he has any. Okay, how do you like the glasswork? Point to the stained glass window. I don't. Fuck her giving me the evil eye. Uh, that's her innocence, Dolores Day, mind your words. I'm getting some real negative vibrations from her too. You wanted to get inside the church and now you don't like the stained glass window? Um, I'm getting some real negative vibrations from her too. No wonder. We have to get rid of it. Dismantle it. Can't dance with a giant mass murderer looking at ya. Not a good look for the club. Mellow man, mellow. No one's a mass murderer. This is a house of love. Mass murder on the floor! <laughs> Egghead. Uh, every time. Um, but she's the innocence of humanism. Humanism seems to be a pretty big deal around here, but she's pretty. Yeah, but like, who isn't accused of being a mass murderer these days? Uh, the resettlement programs were totally okay. I'm a big fan of resettlement programs uh, for some reason. I do feel there is something terrifying about her. Isn't she supposed to be an embodiment of the world spirit? Uh, would you say uh, she was, you know, human? Uh, yeah, I'm done talking about her. I don't want to talk about her anymore. Um, I do feel there is something terrifying about her. There is. She is a party repellent and must be taken down before we can begin partying in here. Um... Keep it, keep the beautiful sharp shards, keep her long face and her hair. Uh, take it down, crash and destroy it, uh, uh, destroy that window. Um, say nothing and stare grimly into the distance. Uh, keep it. The speed freak's eyes narrow with suspicion, as if he's looking at a man possessed. It's not coming down. People are gonna love it. 
It'll be like our thing. Plus, it keeps the cold and the rain out. Um, isn't she supposed to be an embodiment of the world spirit? Um, uh, I think I'm done talking about her. a strange her. choice of words. Caustic. Overflowing with negativity. That can't be healthy. What's happening here? Why do you keep coming back to this window? I don't know. Nothing. Everything's okay. Uh, it's a nice vin. Uh, it's a nice window. Um. Uh, everything's okay. But it isn't, and you shouldn't come back to this anymore. This should be the last time. Stop talking about that damn window, please. <laughs> Let's talk about the glasswork again. I've been thinking about her. Um